all of that. We're muted. Hey everyone, my name is Meredith, and I'd like to welcome you to the Keep It Pro training call brought to you by Networking Wisdom each and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific for the past six years. The purpose of this call is not only to teach you specific business skills, but most importantly, to teach you life skills that are essential to getting you to the next level in both business and your personal life. I have the honor and privilege to introduce the creator and host of this call, Mr. Amasio Fulcher. Ramacio is an extremely successful international entrepreneur, as well as a sought-after leader, trainer, coach, and mentor. Ramacio not only teaches others, but he himself applies what he teaches through his intense focus and dedication, which has allowed him to achieve unprecedented success. In fact, in just the five years I have known Ramacio, I have seen him build teams at record speed. I have seen him break records in network marketing, become one of the world's top MLM income earners, and help thousands of people all over the world make life-changing income. Over the last several years, Ramatu has made it his number one focus to grow his faith and his relationship with God. His dedication and faith are so strong that I have seen him go through incredibly tough times, yet he can bounce back emotionally within minutes. I have seen miracles occur right in front of us because of his strong, growing faith. He has been an incredible example for me as to how faith can change your life. Having said that, Ramacio puts 100% of himself into these calls to share everything he has learned in the hopes that his listeners can benefit from his words. Each of these calls are fully intentional. Ramacio's goal for this call is for it to be a blessing to other people because he believes what you make happen for others God will make happen for you. He is here on this call today to serve you, to teach you, to enlighten you. Without further ado, let me get out of the way and introduce your millionaire mentor, marketplace minister, Mr. Amatio Fulcher. Are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me, Meredith? Yes, I can. All righty. Thank you so much, as always, for stepping up in gratitude and being an excellent host. We love you. We appreciate you. I want to welcome every single one of you back again for another edition uh, to the Networking Wisdom Keep It Pro Sunday training call. Yes, it's been six years that we've it's been six years that we've been doing this call, and we will not stop. We know that a lot of people are being blessed. Uh, we know that these calls provide <clears throat> for some confirmation to something that they had been pondering, something that they had been uh, thinking about, maybe something that they heard in their spirit, maybe just something that they had been wondering for quite some time and had got on their knees and prayed to God for confirmation. Please confirm what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, where I'm going is right. And we know that these calls have provided that for thousands of people all across the world, and we're grateful. But at the same time, we also know that this call, is also, it also pro provides insight to, to those people that may not have known a thing or two about perhaps skill set or also life skills as well. And so we're grateful that you're here. We uh, encourage you, come one, come all. This call is absolutely free. Every time, every Sunday we get a chance to do it. I'm never, uh, I, I, I always take it serious. I never take it for granted who may be here with us today. Uh, I never make that mistake. And the reason why, guys, is we know and we truly believe that what we make happen for others, we know God will make it happen for us. And I want to encourage you to say that with us. That is quite that is a very, very, very accurate and profound uh, statement. And I want to encourage you to say it out loud. Once again, what I make happen for others, God will make it happen for me. You know, today's topic that we're going to be jumping into is something that's quite special to me. It's very, very important. Uh, it deserves about a thousand asterisks next to it. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 the topic that uh, I believe it encompasses your life's body of work. Come on now, come on now, come on now. I really believe that the topic that we're talking about it encompasses your life's body of work. I was talking to a young man just a couple of days ago, 
And I shared with him, this is a young man, and I said, listen, in this lifetime, there are two dates that are the most important dates of your entire life. The first date is the day that you are physically born when you come into the world. That is a very, very, you know, we call it your birth date, right? That was the day when you showed up on the scene. But the second date, I believe, is even more important than the first. The second date is the date when you actually discover why you were born. With that being said, as I repeat again, today's call, I really believe, is so important because it encompasses your entire life's body of work. And this is why if you're with us, if you're in the middle of something, I want to encourage you just to take a few moments to kind of be present on this call. Uh, for those of you that are listening to the replay, uh, I'm hoping that you're in a, a place where you can really, really be in a place to receive uh, what's being said. Not just hear it, but receive it. Because I believe if you really act on what we're talking about right now, it is the difference maker. Uh, I want to give this call the 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 the, uh, the do that it. I want to give this call the do that it deserves. I realize that majority of the people that will listen to this call are people that work a work a job, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with a job. A job does have its place. I don't put down people that have jobs. Again, I believe jobs are necessary. They are what we call a stepping stone to bigger and greater things, right? Okay? So a job does have its place. I understand the majority of you listening have a job. But there are some of you that are listening that are entrepreneurs, and perhaps you're kind of, you got a job, you know, in the daytime, and perhaps maybe on the odd hours, that is where you're working on a business of some kind, whether it's at home business or an actual physical business that you may own. In other words, you're doing two things. And then I know that there's those rare birds out there that you have graduated and you're at the place of wanting to stimulate the economy. And there you are. You, my friend, are an entrepreneur. You, my friend, are an entrepreneur uh, having your own job. Your own bo you're your own boss. And so I say that to just make all of you aware that I'm aware that there are three types of listeners today, those that have jobs, those that are entrepreneurs, and those that have a job and, 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 a, and a business all at the same time, okay? So with what we're about to dive into, the theme of today's call, as I said it a minute ago, I want to say it once more. This is an extremely important topic. And my goal today is to provide confirmation for someone or someones, or my goal is to provide insight, i.e. clarity, to someone who's in the fog. All right? Are we clear? So we, before we dive into the theme and dive into it, the purpose behind it is that my goal is to provide confirmation to somebody out there. And my goal is also to provide insight to those of you that are listening both live and those of you that are listening to the replay. Again, I said this call is this theme that we're about to dive into right now is the summary of your life's body of work. So when we think of you when you're long gone, what will we think of? When you're long gone, what will come to our minds about you? What is the overwhelming thought that we just cannot unequivocally deny this is who she was? This is who he was. What is this going to be for you? And so the theme of today's call is chasing purpose. Many of you have been with me throughout the years and have heard me say a time or two that when you chase purpose, 
you will no longer have to chase paper. Some people thought it was a cute riddle in the beginning. Oh, it sounds so cool and kind of catchy. Oh, you know, when you chase purpose, you don't have to chase paper. But, guys, it's far more than just a cute riddle or a cute saying. It's absolutely, it's absolutely a biblical principle. And I want to encourage you to go beyond uh, just this call right now and to dive deep into this, this message of chasing purpose. I want to start with something very simple. God created all mankind. He created all of us. He created us not only with a purpose in mind, meaning he had already had a purpose for why he created man and woman. He created us for a purpose, right? In other words, let me say that again. Let me say it slow for those of you taking some notes. He created us for a purpose. That means by the time you came out of your mother's womb, there was already an intended purpose for your existence. I said God created us with a purpose. He created us for a purpose, and he created you with a purpose. That's why, going back to the two dates, specifically talking about the second date, which is the date when you finally discover why you were put here on planet Earth, why you're here, the date when you finally discover your purpose of what you are purposed to do is such an important date. Again, we look at God created us for a purpose, and he created us with a purpose. So that means no matter where you are in this world, no matter what country, what continent, no matter what your spiritual beliefs are or not, It means that, guess what? You, my friend, have a purpose. And your life's mission should be not just to have a family. I'm going to say that again. Your life's mission should not only be just to have a family, get married, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know. But it should be to discover what is your purpose. Today on this call, I'm going to provide great clarity on this topic. Everything you look at, everything you can physically see, Everything. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're looking at a screwdriver right now. Everything serves an intended purpose. Come on, man. The couch you are sitting on serves a purpose. The telephone you are listening to me on serves a purpose. The conference call number that you dialed to get into this call, serves a purpose. The food you eat, the quality of food that you eat serves a purpose. The cheap food that is served serves a purpose. The inexpensive things in life serve a purpose. The Expensive things of life serve a purpose. Everything that you can see, your watch serves a purpose. I can go on for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours showing you 
how everything serves a purpose. Again, the theme of this call is chase is chasing purpose. And what I'm the question that I'm putting before you is that when you finally discover your purpose, when you finally discover your purpose, your purpose, your purpose, I keep I want you to underline the word your purpose. There's only one Michael Jordan. There's only one Beyonce. There's only one Jennifer Lopez. There's only one Tiger Woods. There's only one Muhammad Ali, and there ain't but one and only one Jesus Christ. But likewise, there's only one you. I am not saying to you that when you discover your purpose, you're going to be a billionaire, you're, like, you're going to be happy all the time, you're not going to have any sorrow, you're not going to have any pain, you're not going to go through any difficult. In fact, for the record, let's write this down for the record. Even once you know your purpose, you are going to experience hell on earth. Yes, you are. You're going to go through dark times, tough times, uncertain times, challenging times. Yes, you, even though you have a purpose, you're still going to go through difficult times. So let's get this straight. You're not looking for your purpose so that you can finally get to this peaceful existence with no problems in life. There is no such thing. But what I can share with you and I'm going to use one of the greatest illustrations to really paint this picture in your mind for you about purpose, is when we think of a woman, and this becomes quite clear for all of us, and we think of a woman going through the birthing process of giving birth to a baby. And us men, we've never, ever physically given birth to a baby, but, but we know about the process. We've seen, we've heard, you know, about the process. And one thing we know is that there is a lot of pain when a woman is bringing, folks, bringing forth a child. There's a lot of pain that she goes through. I'm reminded of some women are fortunate enough to be able to bear a child naturally without any what we call epidural without any help, she's able to actually endure the pain while other women need a little extra help with the epidural because the pain is so unbearable. The point I'm making here is whether a woman uses the epidural for some help while being in labor or whether she does it naturally. They both are encountering pain, number one. Point number two, but once the baby comes forward, once the baby comes forward, once the baby comes out, all of the pain that both women went through now serves a purpose. So what do we learn about pain? We learn that pain always serves a purpose. So I'm letting you know that purpose is so important. It, pur- purpose is, uh, that is the essential thing. Y- you know, if you are a leader of any kind, which I believe all of you that are listening are, you have to always be asking yourself, what is my purpose? What is my purpose right now? Why would I engage in such folly? Why would I be listening to, you know, you know, a bunch of nonsense with he say, she say, and why would I be getting mixed up with the wrong people? What, what, this is not my purpose. You, you need, listen, I came to McDonald's for a hamburger. If you don't have hamburgers and you're trying to serve me a hot dog, that's not the purpose of why I came to McDonald's. I must leave now, okay? Uh, I came to XYZ place to do XYZ, to do this specific thing. 
this is my purpose. You see what I'm saying? I, I want to teach you the power of literally chasing purpose. Because, see, it's, 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 it's a very frustrating, angering time when you spend a whole bunch of time doing something and you waste days, weeks, months, and years. And you come back, you come to the place to understand, and you, you come to the, to, the, to the point where you say to yourself, what am I doing here? What's my, what's my purpose in this? And you realize you're just running around aimlessly. Going to the, and there's nothing wrong with partying. Trust me, I love the party. But you're just going to the party, to the next 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 party. Party, 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 party. And next thing you know, to you, life is just one big party. And you look up. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years later, and you, and you say to yourself, what have I done with the time that I've been given? And because you didn't know your purpose, because you didn't know your purpose, therefore, everyone else included you <laughs> in their purpose. Did you catch that? I said, because you didn't know your purpose, everyone else included you in their purpose. In other words, the man that was having a party, he knew his purpose was to throw a party. He knew why he was throwing a party. He knew for what reason. He knew what the party was going to be about, who he wanted at the party. And therefore, he was on purpose. He throws parties. That's what he does. And therefore, you got included in their purpose because you don't know yours. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a dangerous thing to be traveling through life and not know your purpose. It is very dangerous. There is absolutely nothing wrong with a job at all. Okay? A job, as I said earlier, it serves a purpose. But if you, my friend, have not come to grips with what your purpose is in this lifetime, you will spend an enormous amount of your time being frustrated. You will spend enormous an enormous amount of time just blowing with the wind, going this way, going that way, going this way, just aimless. As they say, like a ship without a rudder, that means it can't go anywhere. It just spins in circles. And so I want to encourage you today to make this and extremely important for you to chase purpose. Of course, I'm not going to leave you without giving you some action steps. I'm not going to leave you without giving you, well, how do you discover your purpose? How do you find it? I, of course, I'm going to give you the answer to that. But I need to make it quite clear how important purpose is. Everything you can see all, it all has a purpose, including you. You see, when things, watch this now, serve their purpose, it's a beautiful thing. Give me an example. There you are trying to put together uh, a particular thing, and it requires a Phillips screw driver. And isn't it a beautiful thing when you use the appropriate tool for the right thing, when you use a Phillips screwdriver, the same thing that was required, the same thing that was needed? Isn't it a beautiful thing? It's a perfect fit when the Phillips screwdriver comes forward to complete the project that you're doing. 
Likewise, isn't it a purpose? Isn't it a perfect thing when you're trying to, uh, you know, uh, you know, y- you're trying to haul a, a load of whatever it is, and you need a flatbed truck, and there, and there you go, showing up with a flatbed truck to be able to to haul the uh, the, the the materials that you need. It's a perfect fit because you've got the perfect truck the perfect truck that serves the right on time purpose. Isn't it a perfect thing? Doesn't it feel good when, for example, you go to, uh, you know, a comedy show and the comedian is gifted, quite gifted with the ability to make you laugh and they're serving their purpose. It's a perfect fit when purpose is always on time. It's a perfect fit when purpose is at stake and it's always on time. I want you to just take a moment real quick. Take 15, 20 seconds to think about the television that you're looking at and look at that TV. Beautiful. Got nice color to it, you know. Uh, Maybe it's a smart TV. Maybe it can do this and that and all this wonderful stuff. It's serving the purpose. The TV, it's, it's, it's serving the purpose that it was intended for. You see how it's meeting the need because it's operating in purpose. Likewise, when you look in the sky and you see the birds fly and you just see them doing their thing, once again, that bird, is serving its purpose. It's a comfortable thing when somebody says, do you know what time it is? And you look at your watch on your wrist, and boom, the watch has the time because it's serving its purpose. Come on, man, stay with me. I'm asking you the question, are you serving your purpose? It's a beautiful thing when purpose is on time. Woo! It's a beautiful thing when purpose is on time. This is why it's so important for you to chase purpose because there's an intention that's already been predetermined for you. There's an intention. And that intention is God does want you to succeed. He does want you to, 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 you know, to be happy and to conquer your dreams. That was all a part of his plan. It's not going to be easy. But one of the things I love more than anything, is I love in the book of Revelations when it talks about, and I'm going to say this twice for all of you listening, it talks about specifically, clearly, it says that the gift that was given to you, all right, that means every single one of you listening, God has given you a gift. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. He said the gift that he's given you, he said, that he's made room in this world for your gift. Wait a minute, but there's millions and millions and billions of people. But God said, listen, he already knew there was going to be millions and billions and billions of people. He ain't surprised. But he said the gift that was given to you, he would make room in this world for your gift. So do you see how comforting that is? I know you may be in dark times right now. I know you may have three, four, five, six, seven, eight jobs, whatever, for some of you. But I want to bring you some comfort and consolation to know that if you would make it a priority of yours, Make it a strong intention of yours to get down on your knees 
and to begin to cry out and ask God to reveal to you what is, what is your purpose. What is your purpose? Show me my purpose in this season. What is it that I am created to do? I'm reminded of another scripture, Habakkuk 2 and 2. It says, you have not because you ask not. And so what does that mean? It means you need to ask, who am I? What's my purpose? And perhaps the reason why you have not, because you haven't asked. I want to encourage you right now on how you find your purpose. It's very simple. It is not hard. It don't take six weeks. No, no, no. You ain't got to pay to go to no seminar. You know, although I love going to seminars and I highly recommend them. But I'm letting you know that God never said, okay, I'm only going to give you your purpose if you go to a seminar. He never said that. Okay? So, To find your purpose is very simple. It's very simple. We've taught this before, but we'll teach it again today. You grab a piece of paper and you write down all the things that you love, and for some of you that's a really long list. You write down all the things that you hate, and for some of you that's also a very long list. That's number one. You write down the things you love, the things that you hate, you know, things that you're passionate about. That's all number one. You write that down. Number two, answer this question. What are the things that come easy to you, but they're harder for others to figure out? What are the things that come easy to you, but it's harder for others? You see, your purpose is right there, is right in that space right there. When you look at what it is that just, it just, for whatever reason, it just comes easy to you. It's something you've been able to do for a while, for a long time, whether you've made money with it or not whether you've made money with it or not is irrelevant, but it just comes easy to you. It's just something that just, it just clicks for you. It just, you, you, you can do that. It just, it just, it just, it just, for whatever reason, it just, it just clicks for you. Right there in that area lies your purpose. I'll give you an example about myself. And again, I'm going to give you my purpose. This does not mean it's your purpose. Romancio loves people. I love people. I've always been that way. I love to uh, to make people smile. I love to spread love around. I love to make people feel uh, comfortable and to feel like they're a part of a thing. And I don't want anybody to feel like, oh, you know, I, you know, I want everybody to feel comfortable and to feel accepted. I love people. I was the kid at school that, you know, would would defend the people that were being picked on. I, would, I was a kid in school where as we were playing sports, if nobody wanted them on their team, hey, man, you can come be on my team. It's all good. We're we going to win with you, baby. You, you're going to be the lucky winner right here. Just because you own this team right here, you're going to be the one to make the difference. That's right, Fred. That's right. That's right. See, that's my spirit. That's who I am. I don't, I don't want people feeling like they're they not a part of this or they're not good enough or they're all – no, I don't like that. I never have liked that, ever. All right? So I love people. I love to to serve. I love to serve. I love to help people. I love being a part of uh, a profession or or a business that's really making a difference. Like if I'm going to do a business and if I'm going to do something, it has to be legal. It has to be moral, and it's got to be ethical, period or I just won't do it. That's just me. So, so, and one of the things I got to tell you is, honestly, I love God. 
I love God with all my heart. I make mistakes all the time, but I do love him. Because I, I'm taking my time to learn all that he went through for me just to have the liberties, the freedoms, the state of mind, to be, for me to be able to just be who I am. I'm, I'm sitting on the shoulders of giants. And the first one being our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm forever eternally grateful. I mean, I, 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 I can't, I, I, can, I can never repay him for the value that he's actually given me. But I constantly thank him in as many ways as I possibly can. What am I saying to you is this. I know that the purpose of my life is to serve humanity with love, compassion, and deliverance. I'm not trying to brag on the phone before any of you. I'm trying to tell you that the man you're listening to once upon a time took the time to really uncover what my purpose was. Because when I didn't know my purpose, that means I was trying to be everyone and everything else. I was, try I was confused. I was trying to be this and trying to be that and trying to... You know, and it, and it just didn't feel right because I was trying to be so many different things because, obviously, you wa I wanted to be accepted. But then I finally kind of came across a course like what you're listening to right now where I really, really started to understand, oh, I need to know my purpose. And I, could, I was able, thankfully, I was able to see the power in knowing your purpose and pursuing your purpose. I was able to see how that would make a huge difference in life. And so I chose to pursue that. And it was one of the greatest discoveries of my life is to be able to discover what my purpose is, to own it, to love it, to cherish it, to be about it no matter what anyone else says. It's very rewarding. And then as I continued to study it further and further and further and further and further, I started to see that the people that go very, 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 very far in life, they're all purpose-driven people. They're all. Doesn't matter what their race is. Doesn't matter what their uh, ethnic, ethnicity is or what their spiritual background. None of that matters. They're all purpose-driven. They know their purpose. And I saw the power of purpose. When you, put, when you take purpose and you put it to work with passion, you know, determination, oh, it's a beautiful thing to see purpose at work. And so what we're saying here to you is, what's your purpose? Are you chasing paper or are you chasing purpose? And I'm telling you, man, when you chase purpose, you're going to have some tough times. You're still going to have to deal with, you know, the afflictions of life, yes. But in your soul, it's fulfilling to know. You can stand up and say and look in the mirror and say, I have a purpose. This is my purpose. And notice, I, I never said a purpose is a particular thing. I never said that. I never said that. For example, the purpose of my life is to serve humanity with love, compassion, and deliverance. Now, some of you hearing may say, what did he just say? I have no idea what that, what that means. Wonderful. It's not meant for you to understand it. It's meant for me to understand it. It's my purpose. And boy, I fully understand it. It means, now I can tell you this. If you're going to go to God and ask God to clarify what your purpose is, there's a couple things I can tell you for certain, for certain, that your purpose that will be included in your purpose. Number one, you're put here to serve. Whatever it is you're going to be doing, 
whatever you are put here on this earth to serve. We all have to serve somebody. So I know that your purpose is rooted in service. I don't know what your purpose is, but you're put here to serve. That I know for certain. Okay? But to whom you're meant to serve, I I don't know. I don't know if your purpose is to serve the elephants. I don't know if your purpose is to serve the, the, the children, the whales, the dogs, the cats. I don't know. I don't know. I just know your purpose is rooted in service. That I know for sure. That I know for sure. And so what I want to leave you with, guys, is I want you to take the time. Trust me, it's the best investment you'll ever make. It's for you to take the time right now to really uncover what is your purpose. Don't feel overwhelmed with the fact that, well, man, that's a big question. I don't know where to start. I just gave you the answers. Grab a piece of paper. What do you love? What do you hate? It's question one. Question two, what comes easily for you, but it's harder for others? What are the things that come very easy to you? It reminds me of my, my, my time that I spent with Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. And I remember her telling, I remember her saying, your life's mission should always be to discover the purpose why you were put here. And once you find that, shine the light on that, baby. Shine the light on that thing. Whatever that thing is, whatever it is, shine the light so bright on your purpose. You're going to have to grow your purpose. You're going to have to protect. You're going to have to protect your purpose. You're going to have to feed your purpose. You're going to have to nurture it. You're going to have to you know, you, you're going to have to, you, you, you got to protect your purpose. You got to put it in a, in a good environment. You got to love on your purpose. You got to talk to your purpose. You got to strengthen your purpose. You got to encourage your purpose. That's right. It's like when they first find diamonds, they're buried deep, 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 deep down there. And they're covered in all sorts of, you know, mud and silk and they, they look all dirty. But once they shine that thing up and they put the light on it, that diamond shines bright as it was intended to do. And don't nothing shine brighter than a diamond because that's its purpose. So even though the diamond was buried deep, 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 deep in the ground, even though it was buried, it still always was a diamond. But you got to protect it. You got to grow it. You got to feed it. You got to cherish it. But before you can do any of that, before you can do any of that, you got to know what is your purpose. I'm grateful to a a mentor, uh, a friend of mine, Tony Robbins, uh, for those of you that do know who he is, that's great. For those of you that don't know, uh, in, the, in the world today, uh, arguably, he is the world's greatest peak performance coach. And I'm forever grateful of the seminars that he holds. And, and now he's, he's doing them virtually uh, because of, you know, the whole COVID thing. And, that, you know, but uh, I, I've, I've been fortunate enough to attend his seminars some 16 times, and um, I'm glad that uh, the particular seminar, that if anybody's listening to me, that uh, uh, if you could find a way to, to come up with the resources to, to sign up for it, it will cost you thousands and thousands of dollars, but trust me, it is more than worth it. 
It is, I, I repeat, it is more than worth it. I'd encourage you to, to attend what's called Date with Destiny. Um, I don't know. I think it was, it, I don't want to say the price, but it was, it, 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 trust me, it was more than worth it. But yes, it's going to be a pretty penny, but it was more than worth it. Um, it's called Date with Destiny, where you will actually spend a couple of days discovering your purpose. There's an environment that he's created. There's a series of exercises that you will do. Um, and the whole goal is for you to come out of there knowing, being at complete peace you, with you knowing what your purpose is. And I'm telling you, it is one of the most fulfilling moments of your entire life, should you dare uh, go and actually, you know, take the time to do this. I'm just telling you, it's so fulfilling. It clears the fog. And it allows you to anchor yourself in this is who I am. This is my purpose. And um, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful experience that I encourage all of you to, if you, if you can, or make, it, make it a priority. Make it a priority to put that on your list of things to get done right away. And here's why I say this. When you don't know what your purpose is, guys, you, like I said earlier, you pretty much just get recruited into everybody else's purpose because you don't know your own. So if you don't use you, somebody else will. And I'm letting you know from God above, he gave all of us a purpose. All of us, he created us for a purpose and with a purpose. Did you catch that? You were created for a purpose. God had a big plan. He has a big plan. And people are a major, 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 major part of that plan. Okay? Okay. Number one, but he, but he created you with a purpose as well. And that's why I, I, I'm taking this time here, and I, and I and I'm hope I'm coming through loud and clear to whoever you are. And I hope you are uh, seeing the benefits of the relevance of this topic right now. We're not talking about you becoming a millionaire, a billionaire. That's your choice. We're talking about something far greater than that. We're talking about that one day we all will leave this, this earth, but we all will be, be remembered by our purpose. What is your purpose? We all will be remembered by the body of work that we did. Now, what is your body of work? David Copperfield will be remembered as a, as, as a, as a magician. Michael Jordan will be remembered as one of the greatest athletes to ever touch a ball. Now, that's not all he did. He's a businessman, but his purpose, that basketball took him places that no other place could take him. What will you be remembered by? What's your purpose? What is your purpose? Listen, it's not about making millions and billions and all. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about when you come into alignment, when you come into agreement with the thing that you were purposed to do, you are just as powerful as the TV, the screwdriver, the car, the time clock, the telephone. You are just as powerful as anything else that's serving its purpose is. And let me tell you something. Have you ever seen something that is not serving its purpose? Have you ever, 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 ever seen a man or a woman or anything that was not serving its purpose? And you were like, well, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what, 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 is, what is this about? What, what is all this? And you just had that confused look on your face like, but why? I, I don't get why they're doing it. Because they are not serving their purpose. So when things serve its purpose, it's a beautiful thing when purpose is on time, right on time. When purpose is right on time, it's a, it's a comforting thing. It's beautiful. There you go. You're, you get home. You're starving. Ooh, you, you turn on your oven. Ooh, boom, the oven works. Your stove works like it's intended to work, and it serves the purpose that you need to cook the food you need to get you the beautiful meal that you was looking for. Everything was on time. Everything served its purpose. That's the power of purpose on time. 
Look, guys, I love you guys dearly. I want you to take this call serious. As I said at the beginning of this call, this call, my goal is to, to confirm to those of you that need confirmation, but also is to enlighten those of you that perhaps need enlightenment on this particular topic, that I'm letting you know that chasing purpose is far greater than chasing paper. When we talk about fulfillment, fulfillment, joy, and all those amazing emotions, they all lie within purpose. My question to you is, what is your purpose? I'm so grateful that we took the time to provide the answers on this call so you don't have to leave the call scratching your head wondering. We provided the, the map, the how-to, how do you do it, and we gave you other resources on the call. So, guys, look, I love each and every single one of you. Thanks for listening. Take the time to take this call seriously. It's the best investment you can make. Guys, I love you guys, and I'll see you guys all next Sunday. Goodbye, everybody.